Hey guys, it's Jim Halterman from TV Guide Magazine and TV Insider. I'm here with Peter Bergman from The Young and the Restless. Maybe the reason I didn't move on with my romantic life was because I already was with the most amazing woman I've ever known. Maybe you set the bar too high, Red. <laughs> Listen, I don't, I don't think you should say things that you, you might not I'm not mean. saying this because I've had too much to drink. I'm saying it because it's true. We've got a huge Jack Abbott episode, which I'm so excited to see. Tell me what the impetus of this episode is, because there's so much brewing with Phyllis and there's so much history. But tell me about this episode. So this episode starts on a, uh, a, a day that that Jack is kind of uh, uh, heavily weighed by what he did. He he probably shouldn't have said all those things to Phyllis. He'd had one glass of wine too many. He told <laughs> her what his feelings were for her, that he'd never stopped loving her, that uh, he, he just has to live with this. And now he regrets that. And, and so uh, uh, as the day progresses and he's, it's, it's nighttime, he's trying to stay awake so he can talk to Kyle in, in Italy. And uh, it will be morning time in Italy in just a little while if Jack can stay up. And as he fades off, he starts dreaming about the repercussions of blurting those words out to Phyllis and how they affect everyone in his life. And, uh, and so, yeah, that's essentially the episode. Uh, he wakes before the show is over and uh, decides to text someone, um, please meet me, it's important. And we're left wondering uh, at that commercial break uh, who he just texted. Okay. Now, this sounds to me like a battle between the head and the heart, because I'm sure his heart's saying one thing, but his head is saying another. That's a perfect way to describe it. This is, a, this is Jack's uh, head battling with his heart. And I was able to see some of these clips that we'll see in the show, and some of them are, you know, 21, 22 years old, which only shows, like, the history of these characters but also when I was listening to the dialogue I was like this dialogue could work today because a lot of these feelings are still there um but I, what would, what would you say right. to the history yeah go ahead so so the, the history is rich you know uh, and and uh, uh, I worked a great deal with Michelle Stafford uh, for many years and tapping on that is so easy to do I have long said um, Jack and Phyllis didn't break up because they hated each other or something went wrong. They broke up with each other because it was too painful. Mm. Okay. And so, well, so it's, there's always something there. Any, if I run into her at the Grand Phoenix, there's something always kind of there for both of us. And we talk about it as actors and how important it is to always have that history. It's worth saying no one in Genoa City knows Jack better than Phyllis. It's so true. And I, and I suspect the same could be argued in the reverse, but I'm not the one to say that. Okay. <laughs> Phyllis, when, when Jack recently told her that he still had feelings for her, Phyllis says, our marriage didn't work the first time. Why would it work now? Is there an answer to that? Why, why things might be different now that they could actually make a go at this? No, I don't think there is an answer to that. And I don't okay. think that was Jack's intention when he blurted those words out. He was very clear, I'm not acting on these i'm not you're you've moved on we've moved on life's moved on um I, I i'm just this is what i'm stuck with and uh and uh, yeah there were, what could she say and i think jack regrets that too you know he, he uh, i kind of put her in an awful position and and everything but but yeah he got a little too honest with her well, being a longtime fan of the show, I know when Jack Abbott really wants something, he'll make sure he gets it. Are we going to see some of that fight in him? I think uh, Jack can't put those words back in his head. 
Um, I think the words are out there. I think he actually said them out loud in front of the most important person in this story. And, uh, and I think that's a bell that's hard to unring. Well, and I have to say, I, pre I appreciate that one answer. <laughs> I like it. But I have to say, because I also saw one of the clips where Jack is imagining an interaction with Nick, where Nick is basically saying, like, you know, how could you be doing yeah, this? What are you doing? Which, what are you doing? Right. But it shows that Jack has a real conscience about this. He's not just being he selfish. Has a real conscience about this. And, and again, that Phyllis heard this is, it, it, I maybe I shouldn't have said those words, Jack thinks. But when he thinks about Nicholas, oh, I definitely shouldn't have said those words. I mean, Nicholas is a friend. Nicholas is, was, was my stepson. Nicholas and I work together. Nicholas and I have lots of history together. And, and so the second part of the episode, uh, uh, Jack uh, decides to address that. Okay. Well, Peter, always a pleasure to talk to you and continued success. And I can't wait to see this episode. It's going to be a nice walk down memory lane and also kind of pushing into the future as well. Thanks, Jim. It, it, it is a, a fun episode and I enjoyed getting to do it. And I was very flattered that they, they wrote a standalone episode for me. Yeah. You guys, The Young and the Restless airs weekdays on CBS. Make sure to watch. Want to see more great TV coverage? Make sure to hit the subscribe button below this video.